Fighters, today we're going to talk about selling unafraid. But before I do that, if you're seeing this on video in any way, shape, or form, you notice I'm wearing a shirt that says Empire for the contractor fight. So I just want to do a quick plug here. Uh, if you're doing over a million and a half a year in business and you want to scale to eight figures and beyond, go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash empire dash video. You could click a big red button under a really short video for me and fill out an application if uh, you want to scale your business to over $10 million. So anyway, thought I'd share that since I'm wearing the swag here today. But listen, today, my friends, I want to tell you a funny little story. One of my favorite sales calls of all time and a lesson I learned on accident. Those are the best lessons, the one that you learn that you didn't think you were going to learn. So many moons ago, I, I think I have some Native American in me, actually. So I suppose I could talk in the old chief voice now and then many moons ago. So many moons ago, like uh, I had worked for my uncle. He's a painting contractor. Worked for him a couple of years uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps. I was playing in bands and all that stuff, like all contractors do. Literally, like every guy on the paint crew played in a band. It was hilarious. There were like 12 of us, and we were all in rock bands and shit and blues bands and whatever. Um, and boy, did we know how to drink beer. So... Anyway, I digress. Tell me the story, Tom. So I left my uncle's painting company. I just wanted to try something else. And I got into sales, uh, ended up working for, uh, I sold carpet in some one of those carpet stores for like three days and I hated every second of it. So I quit. And a few days later, I got hired by one of those in-home window replacement companies selling vinyl windows. And, um, and so that that was an, that's another story for another time. But anyway, I, I worked selling uh, windows. I had a gig on a Friday night <clears throat> with our band. Um, Might have partaken, is that the word? Partook a little too much in the festivities. Stayed out super late. Rolled in at like, you know, 3.30, 4 in the morning, lugging my drums up three flights of stairs in my apartment. And um, totally tired. Probably still a little buzzed, if I'm honest about it. And I had a sales call that the window company set up for me at Saturday morning, an hour away in Joliet, Illinois. At the time I lived in Naperville, Illinois. And this was, you know, Joliet, you know, give or take an hour, 40, 45 minutes, whatever it is on traffic. And uh, I'd go down there on a Saturday morning for an early appointment to sell this cat some windows. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I pulled my truck up in front of his house. I got out of the truck and I grabbed my little window display case, okay? that we had our little vinyl window in and I'm walking up the driveway and guys, mind you, I'm not in a good mood. I'm tired. I'm crabby. I'm dehydrated. I partied too much the night before. I don't know if anyone listening can relate to that in any way, shape or form. Probably not. I'm probably the only one. So, but I still got my ass up. I went to work, honored the commitment that we made that I would be there. Telemarketers used to set these appointments and whatever. I get halfway up this old guy's driveway and he's in his eighties, mid to upper eighties. <clears throat> and he's, his garage door is open. He's standing in the garage. And as I'm walking up the driveway, he walks out of the garage. He's got a cigarette in his hand. And I later found out he wasn't allowed to smoke in the house. So his my wife made him smoke in the garage. So he's out there. He flicks his cigarette butts. The guy's like, I'm five ten. He had to be like five seven. He's wearing like a veteran's hat on. He's an Air Force veteran, all this other stuff. And he literally walks up to me four feet from me, sticks his finger up in my face and says, I told the girl on the phone, I'm not buying any fucking windows. <laughs> At which, at this point, I said, oh, but sir, please, this is how I pay my bills. And I, you know, just let me show you my, no, I didn't do that. See, that's groveling. We don't do that. Now, had I not been a little tired, hungover, and crabby, I might have done something similar. Not, not that wimpy, but I probably would have been more salesy. Well, what I learned here, the second he said that to me, I looked down at my window in this little suitcase thing. And I just kind of heaved it and I launched it into his yard. I threw it into his front yard and you could hear the glass inside of it break. It was all contained in this case and you hear the glass break and he looks at me, talk about a pattern interrupt. Anyway, he looks at me and I look at him and by now I'm up near the garage <clears throat> and I literally said to the guy, I don't give a shit if you buy a window or not, but whatever the hell you're cooking in there smells really fucking good. His whole demeanor changes. He goes, 
oh, that's my homemade turkey chili. Come on in, have a bowl. All right, hour and a half later, we're in the basement. Paneled old wood paneling, you know, 1970s. You guys know the house, right? We've all been in that house or have a relative with the shag carpet and the old paneling and all that shit. We're sitting down there eating turkey chili, drinking Bacardi at Coke's at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'm writing up a contract for new windows in that dude's house. All right. Here's the lesson that I learned and something we teach till this day in our sales training, guys. You must sell unafraid, meaning you got to sell like you give no fucks if you get the job or not. In fact, you know what? We should have a new shirt. Hashtag GNF. Give no fucks. What do you think? Huh? I like that. See, that's what happens when we do these things. I come up with shit. I didn't say it was a good idea. But anyway, so guys, what I learned is when you're trying to be a salesperson, when you're trying to sell, when you're coming across as you need the sale, it's much harder to get the sale. Okay. Because they can smell desperation and they can smell salesperson. What I unknowingly did that day was I learned, or I basically said to him, I don't care. I really don't care. And you know, Steve Schinholzer, who's who's uh, since retired, but was my business partner for many years, he used to say all the time that you need to sell like you are independently wealthy, meaning I don't give a shit if I get the job or not. And that changes the game, you guys, when you have that mentality that you don't care, and don't misunderstand not caring, okay? You need to take care of your clients. You need to meet their needs and know what their motive is and their reasons for buying, and you need to fucking roll the red carpet and do all the things that we do. But in the actual sales process, if you can detach yourself from the outcome, great things are going to happen. The one thing that I added on to Steve's little phrase there many years ago, when he says, you got to sell like you're independently wealthy. I said, yeah, but you need to market and build your brand. Like your next fucking meal depends on it. You do the combination of those two things. You build your brand, you market, you market, you build your brand, you build relationships, you prospect, you hunt, you fish, farm, whatever the hell you want to call it in the whole analogy world. All right. But then when it comes time for the sales call, Hey, you're great demeanor, great spirit of conversation, but the overall feeling from you and the overall belief is I don't need this job. Guys, when you do that, good things are going to happen. Um, what I, and that was, uh, I, I was very new to that sales job at the time. And I went on and for my time that I worked there, I wasn't there years or anything. It was several months. I was the number one salesperson because I learned that lesson like, wow, when I'm not the typical salesperson, when I'm not showing up trying to sell people, but I'm said just being myself, now every call is not like that, guys. That was a special situation. I wanna, there's asterisk and disclaimers out the ass on that, okay? But what it taught me was, man, I can't be attached to, oh my God, like Tommy Boy. You guys remember Tommy Boy? He's got the little, was a piece of bread or something like that? He's like, here's the sale and I love my little sale and then I rip it apart and I kill it, right? If you're tired of killing your sales, don't be so attached to the outcomes, okay? Do your job, listen, get the motive, talk money, okay? Be open, honest, know your numbers, all the things that we talk about here. Ask great questions, shut the fuck up, all that stuff. When you do that and detach yourself from the outcome and you sell like you give no fucks, good things happen. You guys rock, I gotta roll, I'm out.